Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. How is everyone doing? God bless you all. Can everybody hear me? Let me know if you can hear me, okay? I just woke up from sleep now. So my voice is still a little... It's still a little, um, I don't know how to describe it. Wow. I'm just realizing now that I have this terrible sore throat. My God. I've been doing so much lately. Even yesterday, I did so much. My God. Michael, give me a bottle of water, please. Wow. And this one is very serious. I didn't have it before sleeping. Oh my God. You can't even swallow anything. Hmm. Yesterday I was doing so much. I did how many videos yesterday? Four videos. My God. I didn't sleep till this morning at about 8, 8 10 a.m. And even this morning, I thought I was going to sleep till like 2, 3. Something woke me up at 12, 30 something. And that time, the 12 p.m. deliverance was showing. And I didn't sleep again till 4. You know, I'm supposed to be on vacation resting after coming from Kenya. But instead, look at what I'm doing. I'm organizing a 12 days fasting. It's not easy. Um, thank you, Jesus. So I've gotten some testimonies from people that watch the 12 o'clock mass prayer. Thank you, my darling. Open one for me, please. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Wow, this is bad. Where did this one come from? Hmm. My God. Mm. It is well. I think it's all top out of stress or whatever because it doesn't make sense. But it is. I'm just gonna bless water and it will be healed. Thank you, Jesus. So I've I've gotten a few testimonies from people that watch the 12 p.m prayer and one lady in particular she sent a hundred dollar offering deliverance offering on paypal and she said that he she said you touched my case today that um you talked about a lady that they, they did something to that has not been married for 13 years or something. That That's me, woman of God. So she sent $100 and was just thanking God. And when I saw that, I was like, my God, this video, I did it in February. I think February of this year, which is how many months ago. We're just showing it again because I was led to show that 
because the deliverance videos they never um they never lose the power none of my videos lose power god told me he said when i'm gone people will watch my videos a lot and they will still be healed or you know so i was just thinking i'm like this deliverance video i did it in february that prophecy or that um word of knowledge that i gave I said that somebody that uh, they've done something to you for 13 years, you can't get married. That was since February, but God is so amazing that somebody is watching it now in November. Understand? And it still applies to somebody from in this month. So I was just thanking God and just, you know, just praising him and just telling him how powerful he is and everything. And I just started thinking, what if at that time in February, I, I didn't do the video? Or what if I had not even started doing what I'm doing? Will people be free like this? Will people be saved? Will people come to God? Will people love God? Will people be doing their, their calling, fulfilling their destiny and all? So I was just thanking God and I also realized that about this time, two years ago, I had a fasting that I organized on the 1st of November for 11 days. And that was for, I think, spiritual growth and restoration. And I was consistent the way I'm consistent now. And you know, it's good that Facebook reminds us of all these things because it just kind of makes you understand that you're on the right track. Some people that watch then are probably no longer here. But the fact is, I am still here. I'm still doing what God called me to do. That's one thing that a lot of people lack. Listen to what I'm saying, right? A lot of people lack consistency. They get tired quickly. They do stuff because it's the end thing. Or they were looking for something in that stuff. If they don't get it. They move to another thing. They're not doing it because it's what they are called to do. They're not doing it because it's what they are meant to do. It's like they're just trying out different things. They're just doing it because everybody's doing it at that time. <clears throat> I remember when I started preaching on Facebook, there wasn't a lot of people online that preach on Facebook. But now there's so many, but it didn't stop me from doing mine because I know that I was sent to do it, right? But there are some people by now, they would have probably left and done other things or probably not be, maybe not consistent as they used to be. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, you guys are all fasting because you are looking for divine direction and you also want financial breakthrough. One thing with God, you need to be consistent. You need to be steadfast with God. A lot of people are not patient, they are not steadfast, they are not consistent. Like for instance, God will direct you to, to do something. And while you are doing it, maybe the thing did not turn out the way you expected. You stop it. Even before hearing from God, you get out of it. You say, no, I don't want to do it no more. It's not working out. But that's not right. Like me... I'm still here <laughs> with all the persecution, all the love, all the hate, all the things. I'm still here. I'm still doing it. I just came from Kenya two days ago and I'm already doing a fasting with you guys. Now I'm waking up from this nap, noticing that I have this terrible sore throat. And I know this kind of thing happens when I need to rest, right? But I'm still here. I set my alarm to wake me up so I can do this. But you got very consistent. Very consistent. Very patient. Oh, God has shown me so many things. God, in fact, everything God has told me about this ministry. In fact, if I begin to tell you guys, you will be amazed. The kind of pictures I see in my dream, it's not what I'm seeing now. It's huge. I see, in fact, lately I don't even see stadiums anymore. I see things bigger than stadiums. 
Now, have I gotten a stadium yet? No, but I'm working towards it and I'm holding on to, to that picture that I saw. God has shown me floating. When I was coming from the London program, in the plane, I had a clear dream. It was so clear, clear revelation. I wore a white long dress like the one they wear in Dubai, the one the men wear. But this was like for females. I wore that and suddenly I started hearing angels sing like a choir. I was hearing my voice singing and then suddenly I put my hand out the way I always put my hand when I'm worshiping. And I just started going up and up and up. I was outside. A lot of people were outside. People were pointing. Look at her. Look, look, look. And I saw even faces that I know. And I kept saying, repent. Jesus is coming soon. I will move to the right side, to the left. I was just up, like above their heads and just preaching. And then again, I sat down on air. I was preaching and some people were jumping up to touch my, like I saw that clearly. Has that happened yet? No. It has not happened yet. Actually, in Kenya, when I was worshiping in Kenya, there was a time I felt the presence of God so strong. And I heard a voice tell me, he said, what if you are floating now? Would you know? If you were floating right now, would you know? And I was like, huh? I believe that I floated before on my bed. Those days I used to do um, videos holding the camera on my hand because in that room I showed you guys with my closet, there was a particular day that I couldn't feel anything. I believe that day I have floated because I, I think that day I was begging Jesus to take me with him. I don't know if anybody watched that video. The presence I felt, my whole body became numb. I believe I was suspended in air then because that time, it's like I was not in this world anymore. But this voice I heard clearly in Kenya, it said, what if you are floating now? Would you know? I was like, huh? Right after that, somebody said they had a dream. And that dream, the next day after that, one lady, patient, she's also a preacher online, right? She said she had a dream and in the dream I was preaching. And suddenly I started floating, but I did not know that I was floating. That I was just preaching. It was Helena that came and looked and put her hand on that where I was and saying, wow, woman of God is floating. People started to run out of the room or something like that. But I did not even know I was floating. I was just preaching. And I was telling Helena and Andrea, I said, oh my God. Just yesterday, a voice was asking me, what if you start floating? Would you know? Or what if you're already floating? Would you know? So there are many things God has told me. And these things, they will happen if I'm consistent. They will happen if I'm persistent. They will happen if I stay in the will of God. But if I'm looking for something else, maybe looking for my own fame or looking for recognition or something, none of these things will come to pass. So you need to ask yourself, Father, I need direction. And if you direct me, I'm willing to go. But I, are you asking for direction because you want to show off or you want to do what everybody else is doing or you want to show that you to you are relevant? Or are you asking for God to direct you because you just want to do his will? You want to do what you were sent to do here. The other day I was telling my workers in the studio, I was hearing something like, we are like robots. You know how people create robots? And then they put them to work. And the robots start to work. They came strictly to work. We were created to work. We were created to, to do God's will. So if you see yourself just sitting down, wasting away, that's not why you were created. You were created to work. You were created to do God's will. Like you were created to do God's will. You were created to be useful, not to sit in one place and be complaining. So if you haven't seen yourself useful yet, then you are not accomplishing your purpose of being in this place. You are a robot that the owner created you to come do some kind of work for him. 
And when he tells you to do this work, you don't you can't pick and choose when you want to or when you don't feel like. Or you cannot say, Oh, I don't want to do it like this. I don't want to do this one. Everybody's doing this. Oh, I want to do no 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 no. You were created to come do his will. Even to get married. You were created to come marry the person he told you to marry. You were created to come to come marry the person he told you to marry. Not to pick and choose and say, no, I don't, even though God is revealing that this is the one I need to marry. That I don't want to marry this one. I don't want this one. This is the one I want. No, that's not why you were created. I was reading the book of Matthew um, in the plane a few days ago. I don't even know from which country because, you know, I travel a lot lately. It's just confusing now. But while I was reading the book of Matthew, I, even, I think I even preached it to um, Andra when I was um, reading it. They were talking about the descendants, right? The descendants of David and of Abraham. They said, this is Matthew um, verse 1 said, This is a record of the descendants of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. So they went all the way to the first set of um, descendants and then continued and continued. And then, and then at the end, verse 16, they said, Jacob was the father of Joseph and the husband of Mary. Mary gave back to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. 17 says, all those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to Babylonian exile, and 14 from Babylonian exile to the Messiah. And God gave me a, a revelation. God was telling me that J Joseph was meant to be the 14th, like he was meant to be the, um, the husband of Mary. Because he comes from the line of David, right? It comes from that descendant. So if Mary had said, no, I don't want to be with Joseph. I want to be with somebody else. It's going to mess up this, this um, what's it called? This tree, this descendant tree. But she, she stayed with him or he stayed with her. Because Jesus was supposed to come from that line of David, right? Do you understand what I mean? So I was just looking. I said, what if these two did not marry? This whole chain that they are listing on here. Go and read Matthew 1 from 1 all the way to verse 16. You know? Read Matthew 1 from 1 to 16. You will see that if she had said, oh no, I don't want to marry um, um, Joseph. I want to marry another person. That person may not come from this descendant, right? It may be from another descendant. And then it will make the scriptures not to be fulfilled. It will make the scriptures not to be fulfilled. So they had no choice of who to marry. Two of them coming together was ordained by God. So I was just teaching Andra. I say, my God, people would think that uh, Mary is a mother of um, uh, Jesus. And, you know, like they, they, they don't talk much of Joseph. But in reality, Joseph is the one that comes from that this, um, lineage of David. Like Joseph needed to be the, the, um, the husband of Mary for that um, descendant tree to, to come out perfect. You know, we talk about Mary a lot, but if you're going, you will see how they list which person's father was this person's father, this person's father was this person's father, this person, and then you will see where they got to Joseph. They say Jacob was the father of Joseph, the mother of Mary. And that was the 14th, right? They say 14th, and from, from, um, from that generation to Jesus was 14. So it was 14, 14, 14. So if Mary, even though she's the one carrying Jesus in her womb, had decided to marry another man that is not in this um, line that we're talking about, it will make God a liar. So he needed to be a husband. And that's why the angel also appeared to tell him. Oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Now, if you continue reading, let me read from verse 18, Matthew 1. It said, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary, I like the NLT translation. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. 
But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, and he did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Because he was wondering how can the woman is about to marry, you know, getting pregnant and he hasn't even touched her. She's a virgin. So because he's a good man, he said, okay, he's just going to leave her quietly, not to disgrace her. Maybe he was just asking for direction, like what to do with this one, right? And verse 20 say, as he considered this, oh, I like it in another translation I was reading in the, um, um, in verse tw- verse 20, I was reading it in another translation in the plain, right? The Passion Translation. It says, while he was still debating with himself about what to do. Oh my God, God has a way of bringing his messages out. He said, while he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and had a supernatural dream. This is the translation I was reading it in um, in the plane because I like to read different translations because some of them, they just explain it in a way that something was not explained in the other way. So the more you read, the more you understand, right? So some of you, you are still in a process right now of debating. You are debating on what to do, maybe in marriage or business or career or ministry or something. You are still in the process of debating, I like the way they put it here, while he was still debating with himself about what to do. When somebody is debating about what to do, isn't it direction the person is looking for? Right? You are debating, you are thinking of what to do. You are wondering, what should I do? You are considering, what should I do? It means you need direction right now because you don't want to make a mistake. A lot of you right now, you are in that state of mind where you need direction in your life. When God was telling me the title of the fast, he said these are two major areas that a lot of the believers are suffering right now. Yeah, you speak in tongues, you 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 know, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, but a lot of people still need direction. While he was still debating while he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and had a supernatural dream. How many of you are ready to have a supernatural dream? Type me. Hmm. How many of you are ready to have because you will have it? See me when I speak a word, if you believe it will happen for you. If you are ready for your own supernatural dream, type me. Not even small me. Capital letter M-E. Supernatural dream. God gives direction a lot, especially in the dreams. And that's why the devil attacks our dreams. He does not want us to remember our dreams. He does not want us to even dream at all. This ministry, God has used it to bless a lot of you. Some of you could not dream for years. And God will lead me to pray for your dreams to be unblocked, for your dreams to be restored. And suddenly you are dreaming. You are seeing what God is telling you to do about this or about that, about that. You see, while he was still debating, I need somebody to post this in the, in the Passion Translation, TPT Translation, verse 20 of Matthew, Matthew um, 1. He said, while he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and he had a supernatural dream. Hey, Yabash. Mm. See, somebody said, that's me, woman of God. I'm still debating on what to do in my marriage. I don't want to do God, what God has not approved. Aha, uh-huh. see. God himself gave you guys this message because I had a different one I wanted to preach. But God brought us to this one. I told you, you're going to learn a lot this 12 days. While he was still debating, how many of you right now are still in the process of debating with yourself about what to do about something? Like there's something that you are still debating with yourself about what to do. Come on now. If you are one of those people... Type, I am one of them or something because I don't want me. I want to differentiate you guys. Right now in your life, 
Everybody is debating about something different now. Some people may be debating about marriage. Some people may be job. Some people may be uh, moving to another place. But there's always a debate going on within yourself. Because you're always looking for direction. And the moment you get the right direction and you follow it, you will succeed. But if you don't, you might go make a big mistake. And some people are suffering from a mistake they made like years ago. Because they lack direction. Direction. They are making they, they, like, yeah, <laughs> me, I'm one of those people. I went to get, get married to someone I wasn't supposed to get married to. And I suffered from it. Now, I do have a son that I love so much. But those were like five years of hell for me. And because of that, I am so afraid of marriage right now. You know, I preach it and all, but in reality, I am so scared of getting married. <laughs> you guys understand. God has already shown me my husband, shown me everything. In fact, right now, Seth, when I woke up from a dream, I just woke up from a dream where I was sleeping. This just before I came on this prayer line, I was sleeping on a bed and there was this dwarf on the bed with me, a short guy. <laughs> <laughs> look like one of those guys that act um, Nigerian movies. And then he was trying to sleep with me. I said, come on now. You know I'm a pastor now. And he said, no, you are not a pastor. That if you're a pastor, why is your phone playing um, love music or something? I said, oh, that one. Don't worry about that. That's an old phone. Um, that's a song or something in my phone. But I'm a pastor now. I can't sleep with you. He got angry and got up, got dressed up and left. Now, most times when I dream spiritual husband comes, they always get angry and leave. They've not been successful in sleeping with me since God delivered me and gave me his, his anointing. So this dream just happened now. So when the guy got up, he was angry. One short guy like this. I've never seen a short guy. <laughs> I've seen different men in my dream who wanted to sleep with me. But this one, I never see this kind of shortness before. This is a total dwarf. He got angry, dressed up, and he left. And so when I got up from the bed, I saw the one that is supposed to be marrying me. I saw him got a very expensive ring and was trying to propose to me, and then I woke up. So I know God has told me that I'm going to get married soon, and I know it. I've been seeing it. But because of the mistake I made one time like this, because I had no direction, I am still afraid, my dear because his mistake was very bad. Because I lack direction. You see what I'm saying? So some of you, because you lack direction then, you are suffering up till now. Maybe you are still traumatized or something. You know, like I remember when um, I left my ex-husband. Anytime a guy wanted to take me out to like maybe a restaurant or something. Maybe a guy is trying to ask me out. I would be looking for signs in their faces, man, while we are sitting down. In the restaurant, if the man keeps looking at me and the man is not blinking and he's, he's just staring at me like his eyes are shining. I'm like, um, I've watched you for like five minutes, man. You haven't blinked. What's going on? You know what? I don't want to eat no more. I just want to go home. Hey, the way that thing affected me, eh, I suspected every man. <laughs> I said, come, why are you laughing like this? This laugh is not normal. Everything I suspected. I say, um, why are you looking like that? This look, it, it, it was, I, I don't know. It took me a while though to even get healed. Even now, I don't even know if I'm healed from that thing because me, I know what I suffered. Have you married somebody that goes around the street, sleeping on the street like a madman? Have you been with somebody like that in the house, sleeping on the same bed with basically someone that was, that was having mental problems? Unless you have, you will not understand where I'm coming from, my dear. <laughs> so that thing eh, affected me because I lacked direction. So that's what I'm saying, that there's a way that we will make some mistakes that will still affect us till today because we lack direction, because we made the wrong decision, because we went ahead of God, we went to choose what we thought was good for us, and now we are still suffering from it. Don't worry, this woman of God will soon get married, but I'm just telling you what I've been going through. God has shown me my husband like one million times in the dream, but every night I will ask God again, I need another confirmation. 
every time. Father, give me another confirmation. He will show me again. I will ask for another con- Because I made a mistake before. And this time I just want to be sure that it's just right. I think God is just tired of me. That's because I had made a mistake before. So you that have never made a mistake, you do need direction so you don't fall into this category of making a mistake and now you are finding it hard to, to move on or to accept anything. You, you see what I'm saying? So while this man was still debating within himself about what to do, he fell asleep and he had a supernatural dream. All of you put your right hand on your forehead. I want to bless you. I want to pray for you. I want to speak over your life. So you will have your supernatural dream. And not just one time. You're going to have it several times during this fast and even after this fast. So that God will keep revealing things to you. God will keep telling you what you need to do so you don't make mistakes. Just put your right hand on your forehead. Father, everyone that has their hand on their forehead. May they receive their own supernatural dreams in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Starting from today, you will have supernatural dreams just as Joseph did that will give you clear instructions, clear directions on what to do in the name of Jesus. You that have not been able to dream, I free you right now in the name of Jesus. I command your dream life to be restored in the name of Jesus. No more bad dreams. Only dreams from heaven. Only dreams with clear directions. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus name. Some of you, your forehead, you'll be feeling fire right now on your forehead. Some of you, even if you take a small nap right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, even if you take a small nap right now, you will see a dream, a supernatural dream that will change your life. I remember one testimony I posted. The lady that watched, I think she said from the 6 a.m. prayer line, she went to sleep and a nurse also wearing a white um hospital uniform or so was pouring water cleansing are using cleansing are saying um that she has been um blocked fi- her finances have been blocked and her destiny that she's unblocking it for her and she said these were the two things that she really wanted so just day one of the fast god has shown her a supernatural dream of her being delivered from those two major areas and she remembers it clearly and she's very happy. Now you may think that was just a dream. But that really happened. <laughs> it wasn't just a dream. It actually happened. So all of you. You will either get dreams of de- deliverance. Direction. Or you will get dreams. Where, you know even some people is in their dream. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people is in their dream. They got. They received spiritual gifts. They got anointed in their dream. They they were given a sword in their dream. They were given the Bible in their dream. Like many things. If I tell you most of the encounters I've had in the dream, eh, you will be amazed. And you would think that it was just a dream. But in a couple of days, you will begin to notice something change in your life. You'll be noticing a difference in your life. So it was not just a dream. So you have received it. So let's continue reading. Matthew 1 verse 20. I'm reading the Passion Translation because that was a translation that I got the supernatural dream from. It said, while he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and he had a supernatural dream. An angel from the Lord appeared to him in clear light and said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't hesitate To take Mary into your home as your wife. Oh my God. This is clear instruction right there. He said don't hesitate. To take Mary into your home as your wife. Because the power of the Holy Spirit. Has conceived a child in her womb. Meaning do not send her away. That's your destined wife. God has destined it this way. That child she's carrying, she didn't cheat on you. She didn't sleep with any man. It was the Holy Spirit that put it in there. So don't leave her alone. Because let me tell you, eh, especially with marriages, 
Sometimes, eh, in the physical, you look at this person and you're like, if I had to pick my own husband by myself, I don't think I would pick this one. But in the spirit realm, you see how you and this one, you guys are so good together, but in the physical, you don't see it. Maybe in your own physical look, you want somebody that is that is very handsome with a uh, muscle, six pack, and maybe this and that. But in the spirit realm, you can see you and this one doing a lot together. But in the physical, you don't see it. And some people, they go with the physical instead of what God is showing them in the spirit realm. So you know why a lot of marriages crash? People don't want to listen to God. They go with what their eyes is seeing. The lust of the eyes. And they jump into it. Maybe God is saying this is your husband. Not this one. But this one that you want has everything you need right now. The other one has nothing. You say no it cannot be this one. This is the one I love. This is the one I this. Two years later that one loses everything. Or two years later you discover things about him that you did not know before. He's not as caring as this other one. Or maybe he will die young. You know, like he's not supposed to live long or something. And you start to regret. I don't know why we're focused on marriage right now. If there's somebody on here that maybe you are still debating. I know God will direct you. And when God directs you, make sure you obey so you don't make mistakes. In the physical, it may not be all rosy, rosy. Because that's what the devil wants to do so that you will be like, well, it cannot be like this one. It cannot be this one. But in the spirit realm, it is a perfect match. Follow what God shows you and not what the devil is showing you physically. Follow your heart. Do you understand what I mean? Hallelujah. It said, it said because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb, she will give birth to a son. And you are to name him Savior. For he is destined to give his life to save his people from their sins. I'm reading the TPT translation. It said this happens so that the Lord, so that what the Lord spoke through his prophet will come through. Right? So this was to fulfill a scripture. I'm going to read that in King James. It said now all this was done. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means, which is being interpreted as God is with God with us. So now this whole thing is fulfilling scriptures. Now, if somebody along the line, me that maybe Mary or Joseph, had refused to follow the directions or the instructions of God or the angels that were sent to them, it will make God a liar. Scriptures will not be fulfilled and it will be hard and God will not be pleased. There are some things that have been spoken over your, your life that when God tells you to do something, he's fulfilling those things that have been prophesied over your life and your rebellion you saying no, you're not going to do it. It's making all these prophecies seem like they are, they are lies. Do you understand what I mean? So you have to obey so that prophecies can be fulfilled. He said when, when Joseph awoke from his dream, he did all that. Oh my God, thank you Father. Verse 24, somebody posted. God bless you, um, Victoria Hooks. And all the people posting scriptures. I love you guys. You shall be rewarded in Jesus name. Verse 24. It says when Joseph awoke from his dream. He did all that the angel of the Lord. Instructed him to do. Huh? So now he has received the direction that he need. Because he was debating within himself. Seriously. Now that he got that direction. Guess what he did. The moment he woke up, he did everything that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. And he took Mary to be his wife. Some of us, even when the, the Lord is showing us something, we are still resisting. 
And I'm one of those people right now because God has shown me like two million dreams of the person I'm supposed to marry. But every time I would say, Lord, give me another confirmation. Lord, give me another confirmation. Why? This man just had a dream one time. And he got up and he did what he had to do. Why do we keep needing confirmation over and over after several? Because sometimes during the process of waiting for more confirmation, we are wasting time. See me, at least I'm using myself to preach. He said immediately he woke up. He did what the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. Immediately. He did not wait for next week or two weeks. He did exactly what it... See, there was a time I was preaching a few days ago online. I think I was in one of these countries. I don't remember. I think it was audio. And I heard it clearly that there's somebody that God has shown in a dream to sow a seed of $300. I think uh, a seed of $500. I think this was three days ago. And the person has still not done it. That they need to do it right away, right? After that audio, one of my followers messaged me. Like, right? One of my followers messaged me. And she said, woman of God, it's me. I had a dream on Thursday, which is three days ago. And I heard clearly to sow 500. But I was just waiting to see where to sow it or something. I was like, why are you waiting? Which other ministry are you connected to? Is it not where you're connected to that you will sow it? And she sold it, right? She, it was about a job. She said she heard in a dream that she should sow $500 for a job. That she heard it in the dream. Oh, like I just I was just speaking it as God was leading me to speak it in the audio that I was doing, right? Do you know after she sold that $500, the next day she messaged me that she was called for an interview somewhere. I think somewhere she had applied long ago or something. So, what if she had sold it since three days ago when she got the dream? Maybe she would have gotten the job the next day. I'm just saying. Like sometimes when we take a while, when we keep delaying and delaying, it's also delaying our destiny. Once you get the instruction, you get up and you go. Like you do it right away. Maybe you are the one delaying your destiny right now. Holding back and thinking about it, deciding it's better you do it right away. I remember I had a dream. Um, what's it called? I think I was in Nigeria or coming from Nigeria a few days ago. I'm sorry, guys. I'm mixing up all these places because they were so close to each other, right? And I had a dream that I was supposed to give somebody 300 Now, she's also a lady that preaches, right? $300. But when I woke up from the dream... I forgot the dream because I dream so many dreams. If I don't write them or something, I may forget. I forgot it until I was talking to um, someone and this person came up and her name came up again. Like four days later, I was like, oh my God, I just remembered I had a dream that I'm supposed to give this one 300. So I messaged her. I said, how are you, sweetie? Um, I, I don't know. God is telling me to give you um, $300. I don't know why. I, I, I forgot. It was like four or five days ago in a dream. She said, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, that I actually, my car has, um, my car broke down and the amount to fix it is like two, I think 297 or two something, two, 287 or 297, um, 297 or 287. I forgot the figure. So that's, uh, I was praying to God to provide for me. I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I think I was in the plane when I sent the cash up to her. 300 i said sorry sweetie i actually forgot this dream so meanwhile while i forgot to do what i saw in the dream this person's car has been waiting for like three four days because god has already given instruction to somebody to help right but apparently i forgot the dream and i honestly forgot the dream because I think then I was traveling or something. I don't know. It was when we were talking and her name came up. And I just, it's like the thing just flashed to me. I was like, oh my God. And I sent it in the plane. But guess what? What if I never obeyed? Even after I remembered it. Of course, God would have probably sent somebody else. Like God would have probably sent somebody else to help. But that makes us disobedient. That is making us think God should go and look for plan B. And God doesn't want to look for plan B. 
He wants you, the plan A, to do what he wants you to do. Because making him look for plan B is a, is a, is a show of disobedience. I was amazed at the amount that she needed for to fix her car. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, sweetie. I forgot this dream. Like me and this one, we're not even like, the funny thing is, you don't even have to be too close to this person. You don't even have to be like best of buddy with this person. But God trusts you. That's why he shows you these things and he knows you will obey him. See, since I started doing this ministry work, if, you, if I tell you what God has made me do, you will be amazed. Even one particular one that doesn't even like me at all. God told me to give her a thousand dollars. Like, he trusted that I would give her. And I told you guys. And right when I gave her that thousand, I was actually, I heard it. I was going into the bathroom to go pee. And Pastor Isaac and my mom were sitting in the living room. And as I just entered the, the bathroom, I heard it clearly. He mentioned her name and he said a thousand. And I was like, what? This one that, you know, she was among the people that called me witch long time ago when I, I hadn't repented. Why is God so interested in me giving this one money? Maybe God is also checking to see if I have forgiven this one. Or maybe God knows he has provided for me to give her. See, God has his ways. We can't even be questioning him like that. So I came out, I told Pastor Isaac, I told my mom. And then, guess what? I was doing fasting around that time or so, a prayer line or so, I don't know. So I think we were on the prayer line. While I was there, God said, have you sent this money to her? I said, no, after the prayer. He said, no, send it now. I think I've told you guys this before. So while we were in the prayer line speaking in tongues, I had to get my phone. I saw that she was actually preaching online. And I was like, oh my God, how will I get her paper info? So I remember that I had given her money before, like some months ago. So I had to go to her messenger on Facebook and look for our old message. And I saw the place she typed a paper because God said, you have to do it now. So I had to copy the, the email. I went into paper. Once I sent her the money, he said, now, okay, when I was about to send it, he said, type it like this. This is your own miracle money or something like that. I just typed the word for word the way I was hearing it. And then he said, send her the screenshot. So the moment I sent her the screenshot, she had a notification on her phone. And when she opened it, do you know? She had just finished praying for her viewers to receive miracle money. Hey, my God. The timing, eh? Go there. Ay, 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 ay. This lady had just finished telling her viewers if they need miracle money, they should comment or something. And she had just finished praying for them saying, receive your miracle money. Receive your miracle money in the name of Jesus. The moment she finished that prayer, she got a message from me and the message is showing a screenshot saying, this is your own miracle money. Hey, Jesus. She was screaming in her video. She was screaming. She's like, oh my God, I just prayed for you guys for miracle money. And God just sent me my own $1,000. And see, I was in a prayer line that I was organizing. But God said, have you sent it? I said, not yet. I'm waiting. He said, do it now. So it came right on time. And it boosted the faith of the people that were listening to her. Like if the woman of God that is praying for us to receive, just received our own, it means that ours are, will be coming too. God knows how he does his work. And his work is not about how we feel about anyone. He doesn't go about our feelings or, because sometimes this thing called feelings can make you miss out on the blessings of God. Oh, I don't like this one because this one did this to me before. I don't like this one because this one called me next. Who cares what they called you? That's why you need to forgive and you forget. Otherwise, you cannot work with God. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem.
Because somebody that did something to you years ago that God told you to forgive, maybe that's the person that God will tell you to stay in their house for one night as you're going somewhere. But because you have refused to forgive them, you refuse to stay in that house, maybe God has an assignment for you to do in that house. But because of your feelings, you're like, no, I'm not going to stay there. I'd rather stay in a hotel. I don't want to mix with this one. See, 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 see. It's not going to work. That thing shocked me. She was like, oh my God, I just finished praying for you guys for miracle money. And the way that I told me to write it, this is your own miracle money. We don't really understand God. His ways are not our, day, our ways. That's why he said, we that are led by his spirit, by the spirit of God, we are the ones that can call ourselves children of God, sons of God, daughters of God. Because we are directed by his spirit. Without us being directed by his spirit, we will be doing our own thing and it will go against his plan. But if we are led by his spirit and we obey this leading, everything will go smoothly as he has already planned it. God tells you, join this fasting. And you refuse to join the fasting. You just miss direction number one. You understand? God tells you, wake up and pray every 3 a.m. You refuse to wake up and pray every 3 a.m. You just miss direction number two. Like, there are many little instructions that he gives that is part of the direction that you're looking for. Little, little things. Like, God will tell you, so, and see, like that woman that I showed you guys, the purse that she sent to the studio, she said she heard it clearly. That she should give that purse. I didn't tell that woman. I don't even know she had such a purse. That she should give that purse. And she did it right away. Some people will still hold on to it. Said no I cannot give this um, Louis Vuitton purse. This is expensive. I know how much I paid for it. I'm not giving nobody. After all why would I give it to that woman of God. She already has some. Is it for me? Talking about sacrifice. Seed sowing. I was, I'm going to teach that in another audio. But let me just touch one thing here. Yesterday, God was telling me. He said that when people give as he tells them to give. He uses it to settle the needs of others. Like for instance, he was telling me. He said when I gave my car to Bishop. Bishop did not need my car. Because Bishop already had a car, right? He did not ask for the car. God told me to give the car. But he was telling me, he said, do you know that when you gave your car to Bishop, Bishop gave it to his assistant pastor to drive for a while because that one needed a car to be able to come to church. And when that one moved out of town, he gave it to somebody else in the church that needed a car to be coming to church to do what they needed to do. That just imagine that you did not give that car. The assistant pastor will still be looking for a ride. Or will not be able to come to church on time. And this other person will not be able to come. So when we give as God instructs us to give. It makes the work of God to go smoothly. I say oh my God. Wow. Wow. And sometimes God sees that there's a need for that thing in the place that is asking you to give it. Hey, that's the reason why you must give it to the right place. Oh, yeah, cabre, koshkiaha. I'm preaching. See, if you go and give it to another place, that place may not even need it. So if God specified that this thing I'm telling you to give, give it in this place. It's because it is this place that has a need for it. But you say, no, I'm just going to go to my local church and give it. Your local church does not need it. But there's somebody in that place that God wants you to give it that needs it. So it will be as if you have not even given because you did not follow direction. You gave it to the wrong place that you felt was good enough. It's the same thing as tithes, seed sowing, offerings. The place that God is leading you to sow, to give, to tie, 
You say, no, I don't want this one. I'm just going to go to this place and give that place. They already have enough. The place that God is leading you to go do it. They need that money right now. So you are busy giving it to the wrong place. In your mind, you are tithing, you are sowing seed, but God does not even recognize this. You're messing with his business. He's already proportioned everything. He has already done it in a way that if everybody does it here, this one should be fine. If everyone does it here, this one should be fine. He's not doing it in a way that one person will be so, so fine and one person is suffering. No, it's because people don't follow instructions from God. They say, well, I prefer this one, so I'll give it here. So this one is having so much and this one is having nothing. And God is not happy right now. God is not happy right now. Because now, he has to look for another way to bless this other one. To continue the work. Because the ones there are, this, are doing whatever they want to do. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? Sow it here. Clear instruction. Give it here. But you're like, why here now? I don't like this man of God. I don't like this man of God. I want to give it to that one. That one, that one looks like he will use it well. This one, I don't like the way he uses his money. Is it your problem? It is here that you heard to give it. Give it there and walk away. There's a reason it was asked for you to give it there. There could be a need for it in that place. The place you're taking it to, there's no need for it. So then you'll be wondering, you told me to sow and I sowed. Why am I suffering? Why are things not working? Did you sow it in the place that I told you to sow it? Did you give the amount that I told you to give? Did you follow the instructions I gave you? Or did you do it the way you felt it was right? See, don't play with God. God is not a kid that you play with. God is so loving, but God is very firm. He's very strict. There was one time a lady invited me. I think it was in 2016, ending of that year. After God had taught me this dream, ye shall love the Lord and make it all. So this lady invited me to this church. They were doing like a, a worship night. And she said um, uh, that she told the pastor that she wants to invite me to come sing this song. And the pastor agreed. And she's surprised because the pastor never agrees. He doesn't just agree for people like that. Because he has to check them out in the spirit. But once, once she mentioned my name, he said, that's fine. She can come. So I was like, okay, let me come sing the song that the angels taught me. So even while I was there, the pastor was saying, if you know that uh, you are not in good terms with God, don't come on our altar to sing because um, the anointing will, will not, or uh, something, something. He was just saying that if you know that, even the girl that invited me said they've never let her on their altar to sing. But she goes to that church. But me, I was able to stand there. I even have a video on Facebook where I was singing, Ye shall love the Lord and make it all and everything. So at the end of it, while I was about to leave, when the church service was over, I went to go meet the pastor to tell him thank you for allowing me to sing since he didn't even know me and somebody invited me. The moment I gave this guy a handshake, Oh my God, this guy just started talking. I didn't know he was even prophesying. He was saying so many things. It was a man that told me, he said, I see you are always in the closet praying. God says I should tell you to close the door of the closet. And truly, at that time, I was always praying in the closet. But the door was open in the closet. I could see the room. He said, God says you should close the door of the prof uh, closet. He said, God speaks to you a lot. And he said, if you do not do what he's telling, if you do not tell people what he's telling you, he will stop speaking. And truly then God speaks, <laughs> when God started speaking to me, at some point I was thinking it was my mind. Even my mother said at some point was confused. Like I was always hearing, I'm still hearing till today, but my own is like, my own is like, I'm just the one thinking it. My own is a lot. My own is, that's why Pastor Isaac said anything I say is a prophecy. I don't even know when I'm having a normal conversation again. That's why I'm very careful what I say because even my normal conversation turns out to be prophetic. So that, that period, I was still kind of new into this thing and I was wondering what is going on, you know? 
He said, God speaks to you a lot. And he said, if you don't tell people what he's telling you, he will stop speaking. This man, within one minute, he told me more than 100 things. I could not even get all of them because I, I just wanted to tell him, thank you for allowing me to sing on your altar. And then he said, you are like a tree that was just planted and you suddenly grew and you're covering thousands of people. That you just grew like that quick. That that's how you will be like a, a cover or a shade to thousands of people, even though you are just planted. Like he was saying many things. He said, you are going to write a book that there book there's a book in your stomach or something this man was talking 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 his own is like it's just coming out a lot i was like hey maybe this is why god made me come to this church not really because of the singing because sometimes eh, uh, sometimes you would think you're going somewhere because you want to go sing not knowing that god has a surprise there for you not knowing that that's where you will go meet your husband not knowing that that's the place that god wants you to start to worship but god has his ways you may not really know the reason why you enter that place at first but once you get there it will begin to add up you're like oh my god now i know why god is telling me to come here now i know why god let me do you see what i'm saying so God led me there, not because of the song that I had to sing, the ye shall love the Lord. It's because of the message that he had, because I had so many questions at that time. I was asking, I was like, ah, even one time my mother was like, ah, Belema, are you sure you're not doing too much? I said, no, I keep hearing that I, I keep hearing messages. I keep hearing messages. Sometimes I will come online three times, four times a day. So I was like, I was confused. And I think at that period, my bishop was in Nigeria or something. I was just asking God, I said, is it you that is leading me like this? Because I just keep hearing message. I'll finish from one and then I'll hear another message and I'll go online. So my mother even thought that I was going online too much at some point. But when I went to that place and that man said, God speaks to you a lot. And he says, if you don't tell people what he's telling you, he will stop speaking. Hey! I was screaming. I was like, hey, Jesus, thank you. Thank I was so happy because I needed to hear that direction. I needed to hear that. And the moment I came that night, I entered that closet. I showed it to you guys two days ago when I did a video. I closed the door. Hi, I was just thinking, God, I said, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I heard it. Thank you, thank you for all you, everything that came out of his mind. He said, you are like a tree that was just planted and you've grown and now you're covering a lot of people. The guy was saying many things. I told my mother, I said, mommy, look at what this guy said. I said, mommy, ah, don't play with me. Oh, my mother is listening now. So she knows. I said, mommy, ah, me, I have a book in my stomach. Oh, hey, mommy, don't play with me because I will soon write a book. She was laughing. I said, leave my stomach the, the way it is big. It's a book that is there. <laughs> she started laughing. I said, this belly that you're seeing that is so big. It's not ordinary. <laughs> it's a book that is in this belly. That's why it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I said the bigger the belly, the bigger the book. <laughs> I remember that day I was my mother was laughing, he said, Belema, please leave me alone. Go. I said, go and say now book for my belly. So <laughs> I cannot forget that day. So I told my mother about the guy. I said, Mommy, I just went to tell him thank you for allowing me to sing on his stage. Look at all these things he's telling me. And these are things that I really needed to know. Now you see, God gave me direction through this man, through me going to sing a song that he taught me in my dream. Not knowing that it was not even really the song that took me there. It was because I had questions and God wanted to answer my questions. I'm just trying to teach you guys different ways that God can speak and give you the answer of what you are asking him for. We just have to obey the leading. When he leads you, go to this place. You go there because you don't even really know why you are going there. But while you are there, the answers to what you've been asking could be given to you in that place. So God tells you go to a church and you are in that church and you're still wondering why you are in that church. Stay there. Stay there until you hear from God. 
You may be thinking you went there to be in the choir, but maybe that's not the main reason. The main reason was maybe because you are going to be the wife to the pastor, or maybe your husband will come from there, or you are going to be the one to, to help. Something. You just don't know. Stay there <laughs> until God reveals. Don't get so impatient and leave and say, well, God told me to come here, but I'll be here and I don't see anything why I'm here. I don't even know why I'm here. God is not even speaking. huh? God is not even telling me, my dear. In fact, the next one I come, I will, I will, I will continue from this Matthew. And I'll tell you, sometimes when God gives you one instruction, eh, do that one first and stay until you hear the next time he comes to tell you something. Do not rush and go do anything. You wait until you hear the next instruction. A lot of people have not been able to wait for the next one. A lot of people, they hear one and that's it. And then they want to do the rest by themselves. No, you wait the same way he directed you on the first one. He's going to continue soon when the time comes. There's a time in. So that guy, I took my mom the next week to the place to show my mom because I was too amazed at the way the guy told me most things I was asking God. And then when we went, my mother saw for herself and she was like happy too because man, since that day her daughter has been so happy. Even my mother, I told her, I said, mommy, see every time I want to come online, you would think I just want to come. But now you know it's God speaking to me because I just, I would just get offline. And before you know, he would say, I should go back again. And I'm like, ah, but I just finished preaching. So sometimes people will be like, ah, this woman, don't you get tired? I was always coming online to preach. It's like there was just a strong force that was making me do it. But they some people thought I was just wanting to show off. Oh, she just wants to come online, let people see her, that she's beautiful. But that was not it. It was God. There are some of you right now. God is leading you to do something. And you are not so sure if it's God. Because people are making fun of you. Or people are beginning to question you. Don't worry. You will have that supernatural dream. Or you will have that encounter with, with, with whoever God is connecting you to. To answer these questions. To clear this up. And let you know that it's not you. It is God that is leading you. Until you have these answers right. Sometimes you become so restless. Sometimes you become confused. Sometimes you will say, well, maybe I shouldn't do this no more because I don't even know if this is God or if this is me. God likes to clear up confusion. He does not want his children to stay confused. He does not want us to be thinking that, oh, maybe it is this. No, he wants us to know that it is him. So one way or the other, he is going to come to us to tell us if it's through the dreams or through the mouthpiece and uh, through one of his servants or through something. But he will speak to us and clear it up. But he will direct you to how to get that. Because some of you as I'm talking, you know exactly what I'm saying. So when we went now, after that second time or so, maybe second or third time, I told my mother, I said, mommy, I've been blessed visiting this guy. I want to sow a seed to him. And then I didn't really have money, you know. So I put $200 in an envelope. And I said, you know what, for the sake of this seed, I will go there tomorrow just to give him that seed. So that it's not like, because, you know, God was teaching me about seed sowing and all that. Then I think I'd already given my car or something. I'm not sure. So I already kind of understood how it goes, right? 200 it's not like I had money, oh, my dear. That was my most trying time. But when I went to sleep, that night, oh, my mother is watching. She's a witness. I was, I, I, I had a dream. I saw the man, the pastor. And I, I gave him the envelope. Then I came to him. And I gave him the envelope, right? I think I gave him the envelope. And and I, I he asked me how much was it. I said 400. He said, oh, thank you so much. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to give $200 to my wife to take care of some bills. And then I need 200 for something. That I need to take care of. So when I woke up from the sleep. I said father I only have $200 in this envelope. Not $400. And God said well now you know how much you should give him. So I told my mother immediately. Man that money that I gave her. In fact I think that was the last card I had. But I saw it clearly in the dream. That God did not want me to give the $200. He wanted me to give $400. Times two of what I intended. So I immediately changed the amount. And I took her to the church 
Now, the pastor did not tell me he needed money. I was the one that was just wanted to sow a seed because I visited there to sing and I've been so blessed by him. But God increased the amount in the dream. Believe it or not, if I give, when I give that guy that money, don't be surprised if the man is like, wow, we need exactly 400 for what? He doesn't have to tell me, but God has already shown me in the spirit realm that this is the amount needed right now. So you see this thing of sowing. What if I took that 400 and I went to go sow it to Bishop? And it's not even Bishop that God wants me to sow this particular seed to. Of course, I sow seeds to him. But this particular seed was for this man. And God has shown me in the dream that there was a need for it. So even after all these dreams that God showed me, and I still disobeyed, and I said, no, I will take it to this place instead. I'm telling you, it will not be good. My mother was there. I changed the amount. I added 200 more. And once I went to the church, I was so restless until at the end of the church, I just handed him the envelope, and then I had peace. And then he just prayed for me. And that was the last time I went to that place. Because it's not my church. I was just invited there to sing. And before you know it, he told me one or two things. And then I brought my mom. And then I came and gave him that um, seed. And that was it. I've not been there again. So sometimes God may use somebody in your life temporary. And God may tell you to do something in their life. But you will be resisting and saying, no, let me go and do it in the woman of God's life. Or let me go and do it in pastor's life first. Eh, I'm not. No, follow the instructions that God gave you. These are just some examples. I don't want to be staying long on this audios or these videos. So I'm going to stop here for now. Because a lot of believers, this is what you guys need direction somebody asked me woman of god why are you so focused how do you get to know where you want to go how do you my dear most times once i finish one assignment god reveals the next one to me <laughs> like i was just coming from um what's it called i was coming from kenya and in the plane i had a dream and in this dream it, it sometimes it may be like an ordinary dream, but me, I know what to look out for in the dreams. I know what to hear, what to what to what to pay attention to. And God gave me a place that I need to go after this tour that I'm touring. And I was like, oh my God, Father, I've not even completed the world tour yet. So I already know that the next step will be that place. I already told my folks the name. I just don't want to mention it online because I don't want people starting to bother me from those areas. And that one seemed like it's going to be harder than all the ones that I've done. That one seemed like huh, it's going to be tougher than all the other ones that I've done. But you see how God is doing it? He's taking care of the easier ones. Small, small. Small, small. And taking me to the harder ones. Taking me to the harder ones. He's directing me as I'm completing. He's giving me another one as I'm completing. This is how life is. It's not just about woman of God, man of God. It's just for every believer. God will not leave you hanging unless you're a disobedient child. Unless you refuse to do what he tells you to do, then he just leaves you alone until you are ready to obey him. There are some of you right now, you need to be asking for forgiveness because God had given you instructions to do something that you never did. You felt like it was not necessary or you felt like the one telling you to do it was lying or you felt, especially with money and seed sowing, I've noticed that, see, we're going to talk about this in another time, but I've noticed that believers have issues with sowing seeds, giving money, because they listen to people that will say, pastors are chopping your money. Pastors are eating your money. Hey, if pastors don't eat your money, who will come chop your money now? The pastors that you always call to pray for you, if that one not chop your money, who will chop her? I'm sorry, I'm speaking pidgin English right now. Don't be falling into this devil plan of depriving people of their blessings. I hear this all the time and it pisses me off. See, as a woman of God, I have never seen anyone that so seed like me. Hey, my God. <laughs> like, my, you see my studio. You are so happy. Oh, beautiful studio. Do you know on Valentine's Day, God told me to bless three people. One, I gave 2,005. One, I gave 2,000. And one, I gave 30,000. 
to pay for one year rent of a children's department in a church. Hey! 34,500! Hey! You think I just have money sitting somewhere? Three months later, God gave me the perfect place for me to have as my office. And he reminded me of what I did in February. He said, because you obeyed and you did this, that's why I gave you this one. And I paid off one year. I'm just saying, even me as a woman of God, you think I just want to give money like that? Hey! But when I hear it, I just do it. This year, I sowed a seed. Bishop told me that God said I should sow a seed. The, end, the beginning of this year. And I told you guys. I'm always telling you guys this thing. I sold a sacrificial seed. A lot of money. That God is going to take me to countries this year. God is going. See God already promised me these things. But why does he want me to sow a seed to do it? Because that's how God is. Some of you God already promised you something. And now you're like wait. Well, God promised me already. Why do I have to sow a seed for it? My dear, there are some things we don't understand. We just go ahead and do it. I sold, I even told Pastor Isaac, Pastor Isaac tapped into it and sold too. January, I sold $20,000 and then I gave people one one hundred at my program at, from the 31st and children 20, teenagers 50, about 17 or 18K. So almost 40000 as a sacrificial seed. For the 1st of January. And everything he said about taking me to different countries. is happening. I've already been to 14 or 15 countries already. And I'm not broke. I don't even know how the money is coming. So sometimes God will tell you. He will promise you something. Like the woman three days ago. She said in a dream. God told her to sow $500 for a job. You will be wondering. Why would God want somebody to sow 500 for someone that is looking for a job? Why does he want to take the 500 she has? <laughs> Why does he not just give her a job? Why does he want her to sow for the job? She didn't hear it from me. She said she heard it in her dream. You guys should go back and think about it. Father, why would you ask a lady that is looking for a job to sow $500 to get a job? Doesn't she need that money? Doesn't she have bills to pay? That's just how God is. We just obey his instructions. Especially the one that we saw ourselves in the dream. Don't fight it. Do it. But the devil will tell you, well, you that is broke. This 500, you know you have to save it to pay your rent. You know you have to save it. But you saw in a dream that you need to sow 500 so you can get a job. A pastor did not tell you. A woman of God did not tell you. You dreamt and you saw it in your dream. So ask God now, why do you need my money if you want to give me a job? God loves sacrifice. Because God gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice. So this is how God works. So yeah, God may have promised you a lot. But he's waiting for you to do that thing he told you to do. But you're giving excuse that you don't have it yet. You can't do it now. You know my condition. You know how I am. And because of that, you are still in that place. I say I sowed a lot of seed this year. And look at you guys watching me traveling to all these countries. So when people are envious of people, cursing people, calling them names, that they are this, they are that, they don't know the sacrifice that is, in, that is involved. They don't know all of this stuff that has been done. I pray that this message will sink into your heart. And I pray that God himself will reveal a lot to you. That will help you become a believer that will truly, 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 truly be admired by people out there. See, people in the world. They always see believers as people that suffer. Believers are poor people, broke people, uh, dirty people. It's not supposed to be like that. And that's why when they see me looking all fl uh, flashy and fine and enjoying good things, they are saying, hey, I am from marine spirit. Ha! Ah, Jesus! That thing always annoys me. Why do they give so much power to the devil? How does this thing make you feel? Oh, look at the way.
when she likes to sit on nice chairs, she must be from the marine kingdom. Look at the colorful dresses she likes to wear. King Solomon, he had some really colorful robes. God blessed him with wealth. Read about him. They want the world to see us as people that should suffer. They want them to see us as people that, that should not enjoy anything at all. We should just be beggars. Making it seem like only the devil can give you something. The devil has nothing to give you. Look at her. Enjoying this. Enjoying that. When I'm sitting in the first class or the business class and I'm looking at everybody sitting there. I'm like if this man. If this man that works so much can enjoy first class. Why wouldn't a servant of God enjoy it? Why wouldn't a child of God enjoy it? If this one that is committing sin to get money can enjoy this, why wouldn't somebody that God has blessed enjoy it? Let me tell you guys. You need to remove yourself from that mentality. From that broke mentality. From that poor mentality. God is not poor. God is not broke. God is rich. And when he blesses you, it will make you rich. And it will add no sorrow to it. Stop letting these people make you feel like once you are comfortable, once God is blessing you from every angle, it is now marine spirit. Ha! Ah, marine spirit, they steal from you. They kill. They destroy. Some people hate me because of that. Look at how she's... Oh, she, oh my, my girl was, Sue was telling me that she went somewhere with her husband and a girl was talking to her Asking her questions and she said, oh, she works with Princess Belemzi Ministry. She said, oh, that woman of God. I don't know, but I just feel like she, she's just too up there. She just does too much. She's just up there. Like, she's just, she's just up there. She's just feeling too much. Like, like she, this girl just hate me because I'm just beautiful or because I'm just enjoying life or something. I don't even understand. She said, what do you mean by she's up there? She said, well, I watched her in, um, in, the, in London for her birthday and people were greeting her. She was coming inside and it's like people were stopping on the road and for her to come in. And I just, uh, I just feel like she does too much. Man, shut up. Shut up, sweetie. I'm sure you want that kind of treatment too. Stop hating. My God. When people do their birthdays, they do their baby shower, their weddings, they do all this fancy stuff. But when servants of God are being welcomed or doing their own celebration, it becomes a big deal. I say, shut up. I'm never going to be that kind of woman of God that will be looking like a beggar to you all the time. Never. I work hard and my father blesses me a lot. And I'm not going to carry people along that want to remain poor because I refuse to be poor. God told me he will make me one of the richest people in the world. So I'm not going to accept poverty. I'm never going to accept poverty. So if you are here and you are okay with, with accepting poverty, then you are not serving my father in heaven. I don't know which God you are serving. Because he says when he blesses us, it makes us rich. And he had no sorrow to it. <laughs> he has given us the power to make wealth. So I don't know why you are so comfortable with what the devil is telling you. That you should remain poor. They see believers as people that should be looking dirty, smelling, looking like they need to be begging for food. Ah! Why? If the people in the world can enjoy to be comfortable, why can't we be comfortable? So a woman of God that preaches 12 hours, 3 days in a row, 36 hours, she cannot enjoy business class in a plane to rest her legs, to be comfortable? I should go and squeeze myself in economy because I'm trying to show you that I'm humble? Man, shut up. You guys should stop listening to these people. Making you feel like we cannot be blessed. Making you feel like we, we are cursed. We are not cursed. That's why a lot of people run from church. They say, why, why are people welcoming her like that? Why is this one like this? Why is this it like that? Hey, 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 hey. Oh, but they welcome you when you are doing your wedding. They welcome you when you are doing your birthday. So they cannot welcome me. Are you serious? <laughs> 
Me, I don't know who you guys follow, but if you follow this mentality, you will never make it in life. I'm telling you. <laughs> do you know how hard I work? <laughs> do you know how many hours? How many people do you know that do consistently 12-hour programs, two days, three days in a row? So when I work this hard like this, you want me to be suffering? It cannot happen. Never. If you think that what I'm preaching is wrong, you don't have to follow me anymore. But I'm not going to be be, 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 be be teaching you to be poor, to be broke. For what? When God is blessing you. That's why they hate on pastors. Pastor, I've been in, business, in ministry for a while. For a while, suddenly God starts blessing him. And he starts to enjoy. And they say, hey, look at him, he's stealing money. My dear... Are you there? Like, look at me organizing 12 days fasting. We are praying four times a day. I am here. My sore throat and my throat is so sore right now. I am here screaming, preaching and everything. Oh, you don't see all this hard work. But the moment you see me enjoying small money, you begin to call me marine spirit. Ah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See why God, they punish people. <laughs> God deals with people because they don't know what they are talking about. Attributing riches to the devil. Attributing wealth to the devil. The devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you are making it seem like he's the one that can give you money. He's the one that can give you that kind of flashy stuff. See, people that sing all these worldly songs. Uh, this artist, see, I used to be a promoter. So I know these things. That uh, When we bring these celebrities from Africa. If you see the life they live. Uh, if you see how they, they live. People are admiring. They want to be like them. And what are they doing? They're not even adding any value to nobody's life. Uh, they're not even leading anybody to Jesus. But we, that we will come out, spend hours, shout, come out, heal, deliver, do all these things. The moment, oh, somebody even asked me, oh my God, the man that I saw in the uh, airport in Frankfurt, when I was waiting for my flight to come back from Kenya, right? He said, um, 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 what's it called? That they were saying that he saw some of the videos and they were saying that um, um, I like to sit on flashy chairs and then I like to, um, I just like nice things or blah, 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 blah. I say, I beg before when I did do party, now, was I sitting on ugly chairs? He said, no. I said, okay. When I was doing party, did I not like limousine? I said, hey. I said, because those days I couldn't even afford it. But now, God don't give me money to afford the thing. So I like it. I mean, you don't like nice things. You say he does. I said, okay, they're living like this now. And the guy was like, ah, Belemzi. I said, yeah, so because all these people that are talking, they're actually jealous of me. And then he said, okay, let me ask you a question. What about all these pastors that have private jets? Eh? Um, why, why do they even need all the private jets? What do they? I said, my brother, let me ask you a question. Okay, see how I preached. Um, I just finished preaching in Nigeria, and in Monday I was Monday I was in Nigeria. Then Tuesday I was in Frankfurt. Wednesday I was in America. Thursday I was in Kenya. Okay, so you see all these movements. Do you know how many hours I had to sit? Like now I'm sitting here five hours waiting for my flight, right? Me and you are waiting for the same flight five hours, and then you know all these airport protocols and everything, and then I have to be preaching somewhere again the next day. Hey, if I had a private jet. All these things will be cut short. Eh? I say, as for me, God has shown me that I will have private jet. Oh. In fact, I don't see that dream many times. So, I, you have to get ready because, in fact, I can even give you a ride if you want in my private jet. But I will get one because the movement, the way God is moving me, only private jet can help me because all these airports waiting, long lines, all these things, I cannot be going through them and still go and deliver. He say, yes, you are right. I said, but why is it that some artists that sing some songs that make people to lost, make people to be sleeping around, that one can have private jet, everybody thinks it's cool, but a man of God that is so busy traveling to different countries and everything, preaching and bringing people to God, he gets a private jet and it becomes a problem. Why? He said, you are right. I said, do I even need to explain this to you, sir? He said, no. I said, but can't you see? He said, well, it's very true. I say, why is it that we servants of God, we cannot get what we need to be able to do our work easily? But the ones in the world, they can get it, and it's okay. But you want me to be in this country. You want me to be in this next location. You want me to be there. So I should be sitting down in the airport waiting for long flights, standing in a long line, when I can just quickly go while the plane is flying. I'm resting and studying and getting ready for the next program. If I can afford it, what's your problem? So these worldly people, they've made it seem like pastors. We are, we are 
are supposed to suffer. Believers, we are supposed to be broke. We are supposed to die in hunger. This is the wrong mentality. Don't let anyone bring you to that mentality. That's why you will never make it if you keep thinking like that. People that promote the devil and what he does. It's okay for them to enjoy these things. To go to another program that they're doing to bring more people to commit sin. But we, we cannot use these things to go and bring people to repent. It becomes a problem. Why are you using that? Why, why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Please avoid people that talk like this. They are cursed already. If Jesus was here physically right now. You think he will be riding a donkey? Huh? Jesus would you think Jesus will ride a donkey or a boat from here to Australia? <laughs> Jesus will enter a airplane. And if Jesus could afford it, he will have a jet for him and all his disciples together in one plane. Or you think Jesus will take a boat and travel to Australia that I took 17 hours in a flight to get to? He's going to use what is available now to do what he needs to do. He doesn't worship it. He's just a necessity that he needs to use right now for what he has to do. So some people will say, eh, why are you riding limo? Jesus never rode a limo. Jesus never rode limo. Because there was no limo then. If there was a, if there was limo there, I promise you somebody would have paid for a limo. <laughs> for Jesus to get in. <laughs> you don't know. Because there are people that value him there. A lady put an expensive perfume on him, right? And the, uh, the disciples, were, Judas was saying, and eh, she should have used that money. She should have sold that perfume to, to use the money to give to the poor. He said, see, you will always have the poor here, but you will not always have me. Is it a bad thing for somebody to treat me good like this? So even this, that time, this mentality was there. Somebody put perfume on him, nice perfume, they were complaining. So I'm sure that there will be somebody there that would have afforded a limo for Jesus. If Jesus needed to be in a limo, whatever was there then, he would have used it to get the message across to do what he had to do. But you don't expect Jesus walking from here to Europe to go preach. You don't expect Jesus walking from here to Australia to go preach when there is plane, when there are things that needs to be used to fly to these places. At that time, he used whatever was available. Say, why is she riding limo? Jesus did not ride limo because no limo was there. You can even tell that the mentality is so twatted. Don't even argue with fools. It's not them speaking, it's demons speaking through them. See, this fasting, eh? one of the tags is financial breakthrough. A lot of you are suffering financially. In fact, 98% of you on this audio, you are suffering financially. <laughs> First of all, we need to change your mentality. We need to change it totally. A lot of you are suffering financially. See, do you know what financial breakthrough is? Financial releases. You will not suffer again. Not you will get money today and tomorrow you suffer again. No, I'm talking about there will be a steady inflow. Your money has been released. Money is coming from everywhere. Whatever you do is successful. Financial release. Financial breakthrough. It's not because you just get one big check of 2000 You finish it and you're back to square one. That's not what I'm praying for you for. <laughs> That's not what this fast is for. Because if it's that one, everybody can just get <laughs> a big check and relax. We're talking about... Opening the door of your finances. Opening the door of your finances. So the door is not shut anymore. My door can never be shut. God told me. He said even if somebody takes everything I have given you right now. The same day I will double everything and give you more. He said you can never be poor again. You can never be broke again. So we're not talking about financial breakthrough that you will get one big money and then two weeks later you are back to square one. No, no, no. We are talking of financial breakthrough that you will never be broke again. Our father is a rich God. 
one of the scriptures that I gave you guys, Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. It makes you wealthy. And he added no sorrow with it. It's supposed to make you comfortable. It's supposed to make you rich. Not to come with sorrow. These people of the world, a lot of them that go to the devil, don't admire them or envy them from afar. A lot of them are sorrowful because they had to make some strange sacrifice, maybe kill somebody. Or maybe they had to lose one of their body parts. So from afar, you see them, you are saying, child, look at this one, is enjoying all this. But they are not happy. And those people, their money is cursed. I've done deliverance on someone that said that his uncle or so always gives him money. But every time he gives him money, he doesn't know what happens to the money. He gets even broker. Because the uncle is a cultist. It's a ritualist. The money he got is not from God. It's blood money. So whenever he gives them money, he's taking their destiny. Like he said, he doesn't know what will happen. Like the money will not, he, he, he doesn't even understand. So it looks like money, but it's cursed money. It's blood money. It's not good money. It adds sorrow because it's not coming from God. But when God blesses you, it makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. And everyone will know that this is God. And it's not about how hard you work. It is just God's grace, God's blessing. God opening doors for you. Because think about it, you used to work so hard. And you still were not blessed like that. If he's talking about hard work, I don't work hard where where. <laughs> I have worked so hard that eh, <laughs> you will be like this woman. Is this how you like money? But then I had nothing. I walk, 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 walk. Still come back broke. But when God is involved, when God has released his blessings upon you, it's not about how hard you work because you're not taking credit for it. You are giving the credit to God. Before you work hard, but nobody comes to your business. But now, because God's favor and blessing is upon your life, everybody wants to come to your business. Things are booming. Things that were you were struggling in before is going smoothly now. Because it is God that did this. We have 12 days to go. This is just day one. For those of you that want to break the fast. Go ahead and eat. I know some of you have already eaten. But make sure you eat light. This is something you break after 6 o'clock. So we still have 11 more days to go. This is going to be one of the hardest fasts for me. Because I'm supposed to be resting. And then I still have two countries to go. But because I'm obeying God. And I believe God wants to bless a lot of you. That's why I'm doing this. And it's long. <laughs> so it's almost like two weeks of me just staying and just doing all these audios and videos. But this is what I was sent to do. I have a message that I will teach the next time I come on. Um, I thought that was the one I was going to give because God gave it to me earlier. But he ended up preaching this one. So I have another one that I will teach. But I want you guys to add these scriptures. Read the scriptures so that when I come, we'll talk about it. Read Ephesians chapter 4. Um, everybody write Ephesians chapter 4. Add it to your list of scriptures. And Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And Ephesians chapter 4. Romans 12, Ephesians 4. And 1 Corinthians, you can also add chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12. 
I was studying that earlier today. Please make sure you're reading your Bible. Lord. God will speak to you a lot. So Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians chapter 4. Now, if some of you just started joining us now, we do have, um, what's it called? We have other scriptures that I had given you guys earlier. Genesis chapter 12 to chapter 22, because it's a long fast, so I want to keep you guys busy with the Bible reading. Plus, God will also give you some individual scriptures to be reading, follow his instructions to. And then I also gave you Proverbs 10, 22, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And then I think I gave you Exodus chapter... We're talking about Moses and how God kept trying to convince him and he kept resisting and all. All those stories, just add them to your list of study. Bible study keeps you busy and it stays. it keeps you away from getting hungry. Like it's kind of feeling in a way, supernaturally. God bless all of you. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. May God give you that supernatural dream that you need tonight as you go to sleep or as you take a nap in the name of Jesus. May God help you complete this fast in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May God hear. See. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing now that a lot of you listening to my voice right now, he said that you will hear him audibly during these 12 days of fasting. Like you will hear God. You will hear God audibly. You will hear God clearly. Some of you have been struggling with hearing God. As I was praying now, he said they will hear me audibly. Like you will hear him clearly. You will not be guessing if this is God speaking or so, like you will hear him. So receive it now in the name of Jesus. Like my girl, Andra, after the Kenya program, she's been hearing a lot. She even hears stuff before it happened. She will say, oh my God, I heard, oh my God. It's like she's still in shock. So receive it now in the name of Jesus. This is a supernatural ministry. So if I tell you something, you better believe it. Because some of you, I think that's one of your prayer points. You want to hear God audibly. Because how can you be directed by someone that you can hear him? But when you're able to hear him, it will be easy for you to follow his instructions. To follow his directions. So you have received it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Make sure you give your offering for the fast. I'll see you guys at 12 midnight in the next four hours. It is well with you. I love you. Oh, somebody said, I was just speaking to hear him clearly. I was just asking to hear him clearly. Wow. He just answered you just like that. Wow. She said she just asked God that she wants to hear him clearly. And I just said it. Wow. The spirit is once with him. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.